Greetings and welcome to episode 4 of the Yellowed Pages, a channel dedicated to old books and ephemera. I'm Liz and I'm your guide. And this episode is dedicated to Edna Ferber, the books of Edna Ferber. And you might not recognize her name as an author, but you would probably recognize many of her movies. The most famous one was probably Giant that was made with Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean. And that was a, a book to movie. I'm not even sure. I don't remember how I stumbled on her books. I was either wandering around the library. I, I discovered her in probably the early 70s, um, probably either wandering around the library or I saw a movie on The Late Show that was based on one of her books and uh, looked up, her, looked up her, her books at the library. Um, I did read Giant and can't say it's one of my favorites. Her books aren't like warm and fuzzy necessarily and I'm not sure that I would enjoy them now even though there are some that I still read now like every summer my summer books <laughs> but um, they're they're good the characters are good um, and the historical references are really interesting, but again, I don't I don't know that if you're not into or if you're into the warm and fuzzy, eh, you know you can look up an Edna Ferber and see how you like it, but don't expect happy endings in any of them. Um, but I'm I'm glad I read them, and I'm probably. I'm glad I read like Giant and um, Gone with the Wind when I was younger because I don't really have the patience anymore to get through a, a book that long and tedious. But anyway, um, my personal favorite is Saratoga Trunk. And this was... First printing was July 1946, and let's see, oh, the copyright, copyright was 1941, I'm sorry, 1941 by Edna Ferber, and this one takes place in late 1800s. And the main characters are Clint Maroon and Cleo Maroon. And that's the story about how they came together. And it starts off in New Orleans. And this was my first, I think probably my first introduction to New Orleans that made me want to go there. And I, I still haven't made it there after all these years. But uh, it just sounded so interesting the food and the architecture and this book goes into like the railroad the, the it's the beginning of the the railroads going across America and robber barons and um, it's just got some very interesting characters in it and some people I see that compare it to kind of a gone with the wind type of thing and I can see where they get that but and Cleo is is kind of along the lines of a Scarlett O'Hara she's not really a likable person <laughs> until until the end when you see how she's as she's gotten older and uh, she's matured and she turns out okay but um, yeah this this starts off as um, Clint Maroon is turning, I think it's 80, oh, 89th, 89th birthday. And he wants to tell the newspaper people, 
you know, the real story because it's been kind of homogenized um, over the years since he became, he and Cleo became famous. And they don't want to listen. They think he's just kind of getting senile in his old age. But it goes back and talks about um, when um, Cleo first comes back to uh, the United States from Paris because her mother had an affair with a married man uh, who was rather important in New Orleans. And when she got pregnant with Cleo, then they were banished to Paris and with her aunt and so when her mother dies and she and her aunt come back to new orleans and cause trouble for the family and so on and so forth and then she finds out about saratoga new york and because she's on the hunt for a rich rich husband and so they go to saratoga and that wasn't that's another place that i'd like to that I thought was really sounded really fascinating and interesting, and I'd like to get there sometime. Someday, maybe I'll get to go on my uh, a tour of the Edna Ferber, the Edna Ferber book places. But anyway, so Saratoga Trunk is kind of a book that. I kind of like to read every summer. Anyway, uh, the next one is Ice Palace. And this one takes place in Alaska. It says, in Alaska, there's no city of Baranoff. There's no village of Ugruk. There's no building called the Ice Palace. No character in this book is meant to, as a portrayal of a real person. This is copyrighted 1958. And I do have to say that, and I didn't realize this at the time that I was first reading this book, these books, but there are very strong women in all of Edna Ferber's books. And the men don't come off quite as well, but I guess mostly it's it's for the the strength of the women that these books are good. The, the men just aren't terribly reliable for some reason. <laughs> and so there's Ice Palace. Again, some very interesting characters. And on that same vein is Great Sun. That's also Alaska. And this one, and I think both of these, I can't remember if Ice Palace was made into a movie, but I think Great Sun was. Oh, and Saratoga Trunk was, and that was made into a movie with um, Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman. And Great Sun, like I say, is another one uh, that takes place in Alaska. And this one is another one where there's a... Uh, woman that uh, and a man that fall in love and she gets pregnant and but he's married and she uh, has a baby and he ends up taking the baby back home with him to his wife and says that he's adopted her and I said these aren't these aren't real real cheerful books <laughs> But they are good. I mean, I know I make them sound like they're horrible, horrible books. Um, oh, another one that was you'd recognize that was made into a movie was uh, Showboat. And that has a uh, two or three different versions. One version uh, was Irene Dunn that played Magnolia Hawks, Ravenel. And 
that wasn't necessarily a musical, but it did have music in it. But then the 1950s version was definitely a musical, and it was made into a play, too. It started off as a play, um, and the musical made in the 50s starred Howard Keel and Katherine Grayson and Joey Brown and Agnes Moorhead and had some some pretty good music in it. Uh Next one is Cimarron, and this is another one that has some really interesting historical facts in it, and let's see, when was this printed, does it have it, uh, well it does, but it's in, The uh, Roman numerals, I'll have to look that up. Maybe, let's see, 20, can't be 26. Oh, I'll have to look that up. Um, the, uh, for certain descriptive passages in the portion of this book concerned with the opening of Oklahoma in 1889, acknowledgement is made to Hands Up by Freddie Sutton and A.B. McDonald published and copyright uh, MCM XXVU, XSV11 by the Robs Merrill Company. This was another interesting one, and another one where the the woman is is strong, the the husband is not terribly reliable. He's always off doing something adventurous. Uh, Yancey Cravat is his name. And um, he's, he's just not really reliable. <laughs> but what's the name? Uh, what is her name? Serena, Sabrina. Oh. But this one was also made into a movie. I know there was one, uh, one version made with, um, again, Irene Dunn and I think Richard Dix. And another one made where I think Glenn Ford played Yancey. And I have not seen those versions, so I don't know how closely they stick to the book. But... If they did, then the, oh, Sabra, that's it, I couldn't remember her name, Sabra Cravat, uh, she is the heroine of the, of the story. But again, like I say, it's, it's really interesting as far as the American history, good and bad side of it. If you if you like American history and you like a good strong woman, <laughs> then these Edna Ferber books are definitely something you might want to look into. And this is her one of her autobiographies that I picked up. It was very interesting. Now she was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan and lived, uh, she died in uh, New York. She was born in Kalamazoo in 1885 and died in New York in 1968. And she was one of the members of the Algonquin Round Table at the Algonquin Hotel in New York. And that's the one that you've probably heard about. Um, it included George S. Kaufman and Dorothy Parker at the time. And I haven't read, I haven't reread, let's say, I haven't reread um, her autobiography in a while, but since I've got it out, I might take another look at it. I just remember she was a newspaper reporter for a while, and her family was Jewish, and there was a lot of 
a lot of negative negative things that went on when she was a child and of course during World War II and to do with that so oh and she was on a stamp it looks like I wonder what year this was oh 83 USA 83 huh I forgot about that but there's some pictures here and She, she uses her background in journalism, too, in a couple of her books. I know she uses it in Cimarron and one of the Alaska books. But anyway, there's also some some mystery novels out that she where she is the the detective. I've only read one of those. But if you've never read any of Edna Ferber's books, and you're looking for something different to read, then I highly recommend them. There's, like I say, Giant, oops, Giant, Cimarron, uh, Great Sun, Ice Palace, and she has quite a few short stories also, but I can't say that I've read any of those. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in to episode four of the Yellowed Pages, and take care and happy reading. Thank you.